A new NFL season is upon us today. We will be starting up week one NFL reaction videos. video and to my NFL fans hello we're back with NFL videos so uh, welcome welcome one and all we will be getting to the football stuff in just a little bit I do have to get some housekeeping out of the way first and foremost welcome back to another brand new NFL season and I wanted to explain to you guys how NFL coverage is gonna be run here on the channel for the next couple weeks weeks and the foreseeable future so for the next couple weeks, we still have seven weeks of our NASCAR coverage left, and NASCAR will remain at the Monday video head slot. NFL is going to move to the Wednesday video spot, and they're also going to have a brand new spot on Thursday on this channel. So I just wanted to uh, do a little housekeeping and tell you uh, we are revamping NFL coverage on this YouTube channel and providing so much more uh, into it than we ever have before. We are introducing a Thursday night football live stream. There will be a live stream every Thursday starting at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, that starts tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern Time and that will continue for the foreseeable future until about December where we should move that time slot a little further back around 6, 5.30ish. That will be the case. We will have a live stream. Maybe we'll be at 4 for the foreseeable future but for now there will be a live stream live on this YouTube channel where we talk about Thursday Night Football and preview week two starting tomorrow at 4 p.m. Hopefully we get it started at 4. Also, these videos will see brand new segments that I'll be introducing. I just will tell you what the segments are now. Some will, They'll be different each video, but these are the ones that you'll see every video. We'll go around the league. Uh, I will give three takeaways and react to them from these games. If there's anything really big, it's going to be our huge takeaway. Uh, and we will react to the best moment of week one. Sometimes we'll have a what they said segment, a overreaction, underreaction segment, depending on time uh, allowing us to. Okay, so that is kind of what I want to say with that. Um, I also want to introduce another new part of the show. It's going to be what the fans said. That's you guys. And the only way this segment works is if you guys say something that I think should be spotlighted in the show. Give us your take down below in the comments or shoot me an email. My email is in the about me section of this channel. Go shoot me an email or down below in the comments section, write a take that you have. And if it's good enough, I'm going to put it right here on the show and we'll talk about your take. So, the, and that could happen in the live stream too. You might be like, oh yeah, yeah. I like this, and we will definitely react to it in the live stream as well. So that is that. Let's get into the football, shall we? And we will start this episode off um, with uh, Around the League. We'll take a look at each of the games like we do with the finishing results in NASCAR. It's kind of what we're going to do here. They'll also scroll on the ticker at the bottom of your screen. I told you we're revamped this year. The Bills played the Rams in Thursday Night Football and defeated them 31-10. to The Bills could be a real AFC threat this season, guys. I would not underrate them. I'm actually really watching them closely. The Eagles and the Lions. The Lions put up a pretty good number against the Eagles, 38-35. Uh, the Niners and the Bears, 19-10. Uh, the Bears take that one. Steelers defeat the Bengals in overtime after a blocked field goal. What a good game there. Bengals should have had the win, but the Steelers' the, uh, special teams came up on top, blocked a field goal, and the Steelers were able to get, I mean, blocked a extra point, the winning extra point, and the Steelers were able to get that touchdown. The Dolphins crushed the Patriots, made an embarrassing uh, meant out of them in Miami, 20-7. Browns and Panthers, 26-24. to uh, That favors the Browns. The Texans and the Colts still finishing a tie. That's also two overtime games. The Saints and the Falcons. Saints able to come up top by one, 27-26. Ravens-Jets, no surprise. Ravens 24-9. The Commanders and the Jags. Commanders win 
22-22 in their first game with their new name. Packers, Vikings, 23-7. Vikings win, Packers. I, whew, could be a rough season for them. The Giants, keep your eye out on the Giants. That's going to be one of my takeaways today. 21-20 against the Titans. Chargers will beat the Raiders 24-19. Chiefs versus Cardinals, 44-21 in the Chiefs' favor. Buccaneers take the Cowboys 19-30. And Seattle Seahawks beat the Broncos by one. All right, that was around the league. Now I'm going to give you my three takeaways. We'll talk about them. Takeaway number one, Seattle fans aren't the nicest people. Yeah, they're a little bit of jerks. Or is the Cowboys season over? And we'll talk about that there as well. And then we'll talk about the Giants. Are they a sleeper to make it far this season? Let's start with the Seattle fans. Obviously, the Seattle fans, if you didn't hear it, Dak Prescott had his first game back to Seattle. It was his first game as a Bronco and his first game back in Seattle and the Seattle fans greeted him with booze. I think this is terrible. I really don't dis I don't think this is the way you should go about supporting a guy that helped you so much throughout your season. I think that it was actually kind of you should be embarrassed to be a Seattle fan for that. This guy did so much for your organization that I guess they don't even know it. I guess they don't even know it how much he did for them and how much he helped their team out. I thought it was I thought it was terrible. I really did. Now Russell Wilson, uh, you know, obviously should face some, you know, cheers against him, but booze, I feel like it takes it a little bit too far. I mean, we saw a similar situation maybe of a little more magnitude, but when Brady came back to Bo uh, Foxborough, he was met with cheers. And then when he came on the field, he was met with cheers against him, but never a boo. So I think that a guy that led you to Super Bowls, he did so much for your organization, is a top-tier quarterback for you. You shouldn't be booing him. That's just my opinion. Tell me what you guys think um, about that one. All right, my next takeaway was, um, what was it? I am, oh, the Cowboys. Is their season done? Dak Prescott's going to miss, I think it's four weeks now, with a thumb injury. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Dak Prescott seems to miss a lot of time, and it's like every other year for him. One year he misses half the season. The next year he's in the whole season, and then he misses it again in the future. I feel like Dak is going to continuously, he's missing time, and he really needs to, you know, I don't know what it is with him. I really don't know. And I mean, he's such a good quarterback, but is this team in a dismay? Are they should be worried. I, I mean, they lost to the Bucks. Obviously, the Buccaneers are going to be another playoff threat. Tom Brady, as we all think, it's going to be his farewell season, and this could be it for Tom. When you look at a guy like Dak Prescott, who this could be his last time he ever plays Tom Brady, and this could not, it's not just about him playing Tom Brady and the whole Sunday Night Football. Obviously, it's week one. A week one loss down the road means really nothing. Um, unless it comes down to being one win, which then I guess it means something. But I really don't think it means much if you lose week one. But when does it matter? And it matters when you have your top quarterback getting hurt, he's out, and now you have to go to your backup, which who even is their backup quarterback? I don't even know. Let's look it up here. Uh, Cowboys backup. Their backup quarterback is Zeke. Okay. Oh no, Zeke is, is what? Oh, Cooper Rush. Okay, Cooper Rush. I've never heard of him before. Maybe he is a big name in the sport, but I've never heard of Cooper Rush before. So I think if you're a Cowboys fans, you might take four loot losses. Hopefully, you can get at least a win out of that uh, for the Cowboys. Once Dak Prescott returns, I think you will be fine. My, uh, what was my other takeaway? Oh, the Giants. They could have been a. They are a sleeper in these playoffs, and the reason I say that, and I know a lot of people are kind of going like, really, the Giants? You think they're a sleeper? Um, I do. I think they have some weapons this season. And, I mean, I talked about how, you know, their quarterback might not be, sorry, might not be top-notch. No. But they do have weapons. And weapons is what matters when you have people that can do well for you. Obviously, it is a week one victory, and it might be a little bit of an overreaction. But, I mean, I'm looking at it and saying, you know what? I would love to see them make a playoff run. I mean, their division is not that competitive. I mean, Eagles, Commanders, I mean, they can easily make it into the playoffs in their division or at least 
a wild card spot. So be watching them throughout this season. I think there's somebody that we should watch. Okay, for the first ever time, we're going to go to one of our brand new segments in this show, overreaction or underreaction. All right, I'm going to give you guys three, I'm going to read three statements, and um, we're going to see if it is a overreaction or an underreaction. So here's the first one. Cowboys lost to Buccaneers. They lose Dak. Should they lose Hope? Is this an overreaction or an underreact? I don't think this is an overreaction. I don't think it's an underreaction. I think this is spot on. I really do. I think that this is a little bit of a panic. Um, after that week one, Cowboys fans probably feel doomed right now. Just after week one. And maybe they're starting to lose hope. I don't think that's an overreaction. I mean, beyond Dak injury, Dallas has personnel issues and coaching issues. Um, he was definitely, you know, Jerry, we know Jerry, he's a guy, and they have problems in that area, so I think that that is important. Um, let's get a little Dolphins-Patriots here. Dolphins destroy Patriots, underscore the AFC East shift. <sighs> Alright, so the AFC shift. Miami, are they going to be the Cinderella team in 2022? I mean, that's what we have to ask ourselves. And I think this is there's definitely a shift. But I would slightly say this is a little bit of an underreaction. I don't think it underscored the shift. I think this is starting to show that the AFC East is changing. The Patriots aren't the leaders anymore. The Bills are. And Miami is number two. The Patriots aren't number two. They're number three. And I think that really needs to be put into the grand scheme of things. I say that's an underreaction. Um, Chargers met expectations. <sighs> well, let's see. Thursday night football, they're playing Kansas City. And that's two of them right off of the bat. There's a lot of pressure on the Chargers. And Justin Herbert was very good in his first game, I thought. And they were able to take down a team that a lot of people are hyping up, that being L.A., uh, LV, Las Vegas. So with that, I would say that is spot on. I would say the Chargers met expectations for this season. All right, that was that. Um, is that all of our segments for this episode? It is. All right, let's end the show with our best, my best moment from week one. And my best moment from week one does not come from on the field. It comes from off the field. Obviously, Sunday marked, marked the 21st anniversary of 9-11. And for that, Jets fans join together in singing the national anthem. Take a listen to this. Oh, oh, can you see by the light? What's so That was my week one best moment of the week. I thought that was a great moment. We'll have some new segments next week, some new stuff. Join us tomorrow at 4 for Thursday Night Football uh, live stream. Until then, my name is Cameron Simpson. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.